Hi, my name is Jim Moyle, and this is episode three of our image management series for Windows Virtual Desktop. As we have a look inside the Azure portal here, we can see that we're in the situation that we left off at the end of episode two. We have a hidden Windows 10 image template. Let's unhide that. We have a shared image gallery, an image definition and managed identity, and we actually have an image version as well. All right. What we want to have a look at today is we've done everything in PowerShell so far. So let's see how to do it via an ARM template. We have a look at the image builder and we noticed before we couldn't actually see a lot of the details about this particular um, builder. But interestingly, we can export our template. So let's do that and let's download it. Very handy because as yet there's no GUI for Azure Image Builder. So the ability to export a, a template from the existing resource is very handy. So let's go back to our resource group. And what we're going to do is now we've exported that template, we're actually going to delete the resources from inside this group and clean it up. So we'll start again with a fresh with it with the arm template deployment. Now remember, in order to delete your temporary staging group, the best way to do that is actually via command line or in the GUI is to delete your image template. Let's just say yes, we definitely do want to do that. That will go away and that will delete the staging resource group along with the storage account inside it and this image template. Now our image template has gone. Let's delete our image version. Now we've got rid of the image version. Let's finally get rid of the image definition. So now all we've got left is our shared image gallery and our managed identity. And obviously that ARM template that we downloaded. Let's have a look at that ARM template right now. We can see here that we've got a couple of parameters. Um, one is bringing out the name, that uh, YT Win 10 image. And the other one is the ID of the image gallery. We're not looking at any new variables. And we've got the resources there. Um, we can see that we've got our um, I manage identity and our location in, in Western Europe and we're taking that name from the uh, from the parameter. We can see that we've got the same three stages that we know and love the source customize and distribute phases. The source is looking at the uh, version of Windows from the marketplace. We've still got the same very basic customization and um, just creating a directory and echoing to a text file uh, via PowerShell in the middle of that image. We will cover customization in uh, much more detail in a, in a later episode. And lastly, we've got that distribute stage where we're looking at the gallery image ID, which is taking the parameter, the external ID and adding on the um, the image definition at the end, and we're replicating to that single location, West Europe. So that is just um, exactly what we created previously. There's quite a lot of hard-coded items in there. It's not very generic, but it does give us a good basis for, um, for, for starting our next stage. Now let's have a look at what we did next. And we'll compare it 
to our existing template. So this is just opening up a different diff, diff between the two um, template files in VS Code, the original one on the right hand side and the new one on the left. We can say we've changed the names of the parameters, something a little bit more simple. And also, instead of a random name, we're actually going to call, uh, give that default value um, for that parameter as a SKU. Because we can tie everything together with the SKU um, uh, as we're looking at the infrastructure. We can see that we've um, changed the parameter and we've also taken away the principal ID and the client ID from the user assigned identity because uh, it just simply won't work if you leave those in there. We've taken away the version at the latest and uh, we've parameterized the SKU. We've added a couple of tags and we've just changed the run output name as well. And we've added a parameter into the end of the gallery image ID. Not a huge amount of changes, just making it a little easier. And now, because we've got a SKU as the parameter, if we change SKUs, then we can get a whole new image definition and we can start from, uh, from there. What I've actually done is this new template we have put into template specs. Here is uh, the template in template specs. This is a public preview uh, feature from Azure. Let's have a quick look at the template. This is, as you can see, the exact same template that we showed. It's a good idea to keep your um, ARM templates in the template specs. Uh, you can RBAC them, uh, you can make sure that these are versioned and um, uh, it's a great way to make sure that you're always on the right version of the ARM template. Now we've got an empty resource group because we did cleaned everything up. So before we deploy this template, we're gonna need to do one thing because the template doesn't have the um, image definition as part of it. So we need to create the image definition so let's do that very easily right here. And there's our image definition created. We can have a look at it inside the portal. And this is called exactly what uh, we're going to be referencing from that template, which is uh, that SKU parameter. So let's deploy this template. And that'll be finished in a couple of seconds. There we go. And if we show our hidden types, we'll now see that we have got our image template. And let's deploy an image from that image template. So we'll need to go back into VS Code. And here's our nice, easy PowerShell command just to run that particular image template. And there we go. That is now off and running. If we take a quick look at our resource groups, we can see we've got the staging resource group. And uh, as we watch this, we will have all of the artifacts that we know very well will appear in this staging resource group. I'm just going to fast forward a couple of minutes. Um, so we'll have a comeback when this is all finished. So we can see that image version has been deployed to our resource group. All we've done here is essentially copy what we did in PowerShell in episode two. We haven't really done anything clever with that ARM template. But there are interesting things that we can now do. 
So first, let's have a look at the image gallery. We can see we've got our image definition in there. And let's just look at the image definition. And previously, we've just copied the Office SKU and uh, the publisher from our source image in the marketplace. Now, within the shared image gallery, these image definitions need to have uh, some uniqueness. They need to have a unique name. And this combination of publisher, offer, and SKU, you can only have one image definition with that specific combination of publisher, offer, and SKU. And if we carry on just copy and pasting those um, fields from the source, then we're not going to have a lot of choice in how many images we can have. We'd have to stand up extra image galleries, etc., etc. So what can we do about this? Well, if we have a look inside the image gallery and we'll do a new image definition, well, the image definition name can be anything. The publisher, well, this can also be anything. What about the version? Well, the version previously, that was assigned automatically from uh, via Azure Image Builder. It'd be nice if we could assign our own version numbers. So what can we do here? We can do 1.2.3, can't do dot .4, can't do 1.2. All right, so it needs to be a three-part version. And we need three fields. So rule of three for a shared image gallery. So let's just create this. We'll try and create another image gallery. We'll, we'll show you. We'll show you the the issues that we get when we try and do duplicate fields and duplicate names. But given that we can put anything at all as the name and anything at all in those three fields, we can use that to our advantage to deploy image definitions which are tagged as departmental or maybe with a language, that sort of thing. So now we can see there's our um, uh, image definition. Let's go back into the shared image gallery, see if we can add a new one. Must be unique. Okay, fine, so let's do that. So if we say this can be anything, well, it can't be anything, it must be unique. Now obviously we can do that again, and I think that this will pick it up on deployment and give us an error saying that uh, that those three fields are not unique. There we go. There's our nice error. This can be anything already exists. Now we know what we can and can't do with the image gallery. Well, let's try and do a clever ARM template, a more useful ARM template an ARM template that can do more than PowerShell. We want it to have a few um, capabilities. I don't want to have to rewrite uh, the script or the template for a new version of the same image. I also want to be able to specify the version. I don't want to have to rewrite it for a new version of Windows 10 that drops to the marketplace. It should automatically cope with that. I want to be able to have multiple images based on the same Windows 10 SKU inside a single gallery. And let's face it, a little bit of basic validation and creating something that you can go to my GitHub, download, and hopefully just use straight away in your environment would also be useful. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go back into our resource group. And let's just clear out the image definition that we don't want. Actually, let's clear out everything else as well, just to give us a nice clean slate. So now we have a nice clean-ish resource group again. Let's have a look at our new version of our 
ARM template. So we parameterize a lot more, so we shouldn't have anything hard coded to <clears throat> stuff in my environment anymore. We got a path to the template, uh, a location, name of the resource group, the name of the managed identity, the name of the image gallery. Now, image definition name. Remember we said that we could change these to what we wanted. So this is what we just saw in the shared image gallery. Just for example, I'm going to say that publisher should be developer. And the offer, let's call it ENGB. So this is an image for developers in the English language. That image definition version we're also going to set ourselves. Remember, it needs to be in that three numbers, major, minor, and build. And we can, interestingly, using the ARM template, we can also change the default size of the VM that's used in the staging resource group. Now, we'll be familiar with that function. That's verifying our details for the SKU as per usual. And now we'll have the details there. Now, this is for the source. So even though it says publisher and offer again, remember this is for the source, those needs to be exact. It's the destination for the shared image gallery, which we can change. A bit confusing, I know, but hopefully I've made it clear here. We're gonna give some things some names, and because they need to be unique, we're gonna combine that publisher, offer, and SKU, both for the source and for the destination, just to make sure that everything is consistent and everything is unique. What we're going to do is we're going to pass in the ID of the managed identity. So we're just going to grab it and stick it into a variable. And then if there's no image definition there, we're going to check for that unique name that we already know. And if not, then we're going to create a new image definition. We're going to have a look inside that image definition for the current versions. We're going to make sure that the version that we've configured in the script is not equal to or lower than the highest version inside that image definition. And if it is, then we'll error and we'll, we'll drop out of, the, uh, out of the script. Once we've done that, We'll clean up if there was an image builder template that's been left lying around at the end of a previous deployment. We'll clean that up. That will also remember clean up the staging group. And now <clears throat> we've got the parameters for the ARM template. The top two are just the normal generic parameters for the ARM template. And then the bottom set of parameters are the specific parameters that I've configured in the ARM template. Let's have a look at that template. Now we just talked about all those parameters. Here they are. I've put some default values in for some, although I have specified them all in the script so you know where to put them if you do want to take the script and use it as your own. Inside that variable section, we're just doing a concatenation and again, because we want to combine those publishers, images, and SKUs together to make that unique name. I'm doing that inside here as well as in the script. And this is how we're going to get the version because that image ID, all you need to do is add the version string and then the parameter with the version. So in our case, 1.0.0. .0 .0. And then the image definition as well. So this is an if statement. So if there is a version configured, and it doesn't have to be, then um, we'll use the one that's configured. If there's not one configured, then we'll let AI AIB do it by default, as we've had, as we've seen before. Resources. We're very familiar with this. We're passing in that uh, ID for the user identity. We've got a new section here in properties, that VM profile. 
There's other things we can put in there. We'll, we'll cover those in another episode. But right now it's that VM size. So we change the size of the staging VM. That's where we put that parameter. And then we're super familiar with the source, customize and distribute. We haven't changed those at all. That's it. Let's run the script and see how we go. So that's now running. I've just got a tiny little script here just to show us um, what's happening in the background. Uh, very super simple. It's That's also in the GitHub. Actually, let me just show you that. All it's doing is doing the get image builder template and selecting a few um, properties from that object. And we'll keep an eye on that and we'll just let it run until it's finished and I'll come back to you when it's done. So that's that uh, image completely deployed. We can see that my little monitoring script has put, got succeeded in uh, both properties there and we've got our image version sitting in our image definition. Let's have a quick look at our image definition. We can see the publisher offer and the SKU are exactly what we wanted it to be. I've kept the SKU as the default because that's good information to have, whether it's the source or the destination. We've got our own version rather than the auto created one. So everything's looking good. Now then, I just want to show you a couple of things. One, we can update the replication. And let's say I wanted to replicate that to UK South. And in fact, we can change the storage account time type if we want that. And that will be off updating uh, the replication targets. And, uh, and just to let you know, you can do it afterwards. You don't have to set the replication in the ARM template. Let's just do or at least start one last deployment. Let's change our version so we don't conflict. And we'll set off and off we go. Uh, the reason I've done this is just to show you that we can actually cancel a build using the <clears throat> cancel action on the build template. And as soon as I get my control back to my thread, we'll try and cancel this, which will give us a, a couple of ticks. So now I've got my mouse back, let's run the cancel operation. It's going to take a couple of seconds, so again, we're just going to fast forward through uh, through that. And that's that finished. So let's have a quick last look in the portal, and we can see that we don't have anything appeared there, so we've cancelled the deployment correctly. All right, so that's it for this episode. Uh, as per usual, if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more, then hit subscribe. Thank you.